Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode and we're going to be talking about how you can accelerate the manufacturing process improvement. I brought in the CEO of FIES, who is Prabhjot Singh. So Prabhjot, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me today, Chris. I'm very excited to have you, sir. Very excited to have you on and, and looking forward to unpacking this conversation with, for the Eco Ask Why listeners out there. You know, we serve the manufacturing community. So when you hear process improvement, people get excited, <laughs> Prob Joe. So I'm excited to hear w- what you're talking about here. So maybe if you're talking with uh, someone about manufacturing process improvement, to high schoolers, for instance. How how are you going to explain (laughs) what that is to that group of people? Oh, man. Uh, High schoolers are a tough crowd. Uh, Yeah, yeah. uh, (laughs) So, right. Well, so process improvement, right, really, as we know, is taking an established production process, something that we, we, we utilize to produce some sort of a product and looking for ways to continuously improve it or incrementally improve it. Right, so that you are producing better quality product, you're potentially producing it faster, right? Identifying opportunities to make that process and product better. So, if I was talking to a group of high schoolers, uh, I'd put it in context of a production process that they might understand, right? So, I'd say, okay, hey, let's think about a, a, a process like making a pizza. Right. Like uh, I. uh, Right. So when you're thinking about any process, right, you want to understand what are the ingredients? What are the things that you have to do to get from the raw ingredients to the finalized product? And then what are the ancillary things around that process that you need to think about? Right. So if I'm making a pizza, right, what do I need? I need I need dough. Uh, I need uh, tomato sauce. Right. I need cheese and I need your favorite toppings. Right. Right. So those are kind of the raw ingredients that go into making that pizza. Uh, Now, we could go and buy the dough at the supermarket or I could get wheat and flour and, you know, uh, get some yeast and let it ferment and, you know, start from scratch. Right. I could do the same thing with tomatoes. I could go and get a can of pizza sauce from the the market or you know i could get tomatoes flown in from italy and you know make make my make my own tomato sauce uh or you could be like be like my wife and and get the seeds and grow your own tomatoes you do that route right (laughs) that's right you could grow you could go even further back in the the supply chain that's right and grow your own tomatoes uh you, you know we we could get uh you know shredded mozzarella cheese we get fresh mozzarella cheese, right? We, uh, we could raise some cows and get whole milk and make the cheese, right? And, and, and the same thing with, you know, your, your favorite toppings. So, uh, so one of the big pieces of any production process is really understanding, well, what are the, what are the ingredients that you need and what are the quality of those ingredients, right? And, and over time, you, you want to certainly create the best tasting pizza for the right price, right? Mm-hmm. Not not the cheapest price because you know that's going to be unedible, right? So, right, right. <laughs> so, um, so, so part of the manufacturing process is is understanding sort of what goes into that into that process, optimizing the the sourcing of those ingredients, uh, and identifying okay, how do you improve the quality of those ingredients that go into that process? Um, and and what you want to do is quality control along the way, right? To make sure that, okay, hey, maybe the cheese hasn't gone bad, right? The tomatoes are rice, ripe and taste good, right? These are all things that you'd want to do as you were making that process uh, more and more efficient. So we've got the ingredients in place. Now we let's talk about the process of, you know, how you kind of put everything together and, you know, you got to make a lot of decisions around, okay, well, you know, do I want to use a pizza stone? Or a pizza steel, or uh, you know, just put it on a rack in the oven, or you know, I could go crazy, set up a brick oven in my backyard, right? So there, yeah. there there's all these considerations of what the processes that we're going to use to actually uh, make that pizza, and what what are what's the machinery that we need, right, to be able to actually make it, um, and 
you know, as far as actually even cooking the pizza, right, you could put all the ingredients on the pie, put them in the oven, and and let it cook for you know 10, 12, 15 minutes. Uh, or, you know, I could bake the crust for five, six minutes and then put the tomato sauce and the other ingredients on. Uh, you, you could probably tell how I've been using my time during the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, but there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's an end-to-end process of making pizza, and when we talk about process improvement, it, it's really related to, okay, well, what's the best tasting pizza I can make at different price points, right? Uh-huh. So, as as you sort of go through and optimize your your overall process over time, uh, those are the two things that I would optimize for, right? right. Like the taste without the ingredients costing like a hundred dollars, right? Which you could do. Uh, but you know, we, we, I, I'm a big fan of, okay, well, you know, when I'm producing pies, let's say, uh, you know, I'll make 10 pies or 12 pies at a, at a pizza party that I might, I, I might throw for my daughter and her friends or what have yeah. you. Right. I, 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 I want them to be like, wow, this is the best pizza I've ever tasted, but I'll optimize for, you know, each of those pies probably cost me, sub five dollars right in in terms of what i what i actually produce right so that's taken me probably a year of process engineering to sort of figure out how to get there right the the first time i did it i set off the fire alarm right because uh the, you know the dismount of the pie onto the steel was very very bad right, <laughs> so, right. Uh, so it takes time and you know and when we're we're talking about manufacturing there's there's actually a lot of sub processes right we 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 talked about upstream supply chain of you got to source your ingredients, right? You've got to, there, there's also sort of, uh, you know, looking at the waste products, right? You right. actually have to get rid of the the packaging that the toppings came in, the the, uh, the cheese came in, right? All of those things go into a end-to-end manufacturing process. Right. And, and typically when we look at process improvement, we want to optimize each part of that process and also look at kind of that end-to-end process right well i love the analogy i mean if you want to connect with high schoolers what better place than some pizza right i mean but that was, that, right. that was a phenomenal way of to breaking that that the whole idea of process improvement from a manufacturing standpoint down and so now maybe the the manufacturer that's listening out there speak to them on the starting point because it, it sounds to be to, it could be like this big hag right this big hairy audacious goal and you just don't know where to go so you you work with so many manufacturers. Where do you start? Yeah, so I, I'm a big big fan of crawl, walk, run. Right there, there's okay. the, there, there's no point in boiling the ocean, and uh, you, you know, as a starting point, uh, you the, the best way to start is to look at a part of an existing process that you think can be optimized, right? Or you have a gut feeling, and we all mm-hmm. you know have a gut feeling about. Hey, here's a process that I think I can improve. Whether it's distribution, it's fulfillment, it's my you know, downstream delivery, upstream supply chain, right? Areas where there's issues, and look, like almost everyone has issues with supply chain these days, for instance. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, we've got we've kind of got anecdotal evidence typically in our minds of hey, here's an area that probably needs some looking into. Mm-hmm. So that's where I would start and, you know, to understand that process improvement kind of cycle, right? How do you, how do you get started? What are the inputs that are needed? Uh, what are the outputs that you get? And then how do you actually use those outputs to make decisions, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, once you understand that, you know, then you can start to kind of look at other parts of that end-to-end process. Uh, and then eventually get to that end-to-end process, right? Right. Like, right. I got you. But, but totally makes sense. So, I mean, I'm also thinking for that manufacturing out there, manufacturer out there, rather, and he's thinking about or she's thinking about their process, and it could be maybe there's some uh, – there's some subjectivity to it, right? It's not so it's, it, everyone has an opinion on where to start. So is there a best practice? Is there something that you, that you would advise on the best way to kind of evaluate that current state to really see a good place? Yeah. I, I, I mean, look, if you can measure it, you can improve it. Right? That's, that, that, that's the age old saying, right? 
Um, and it's no longer an expensive or involved process to, ac- to actually measure what the current state is, right? Mm-hmm. It used to be, uh, you know, back in olden days, you'd hire a consulting company, they'd come in, uh, you, you know, they'd take six months uh, to put together a process improvement report. They'd go and interview people on the line, interview, uh, you know, midline managers. Um, and, you know, they'd look at some aspect of the end-to-end process, right? Like we, we, we've all seen in our, in our experience, uh, you know, people standing with stopwatches to sort of see how long a particular step in the process takes, right? Right, like right. No, none of that needs to be done anymore, right? Because there's a digital footprint for almost all activities that happen in a manufacturing process, right? Or we understand what are the different steps, what are the different stages uh, that a, a process has to go through. Uh, we typically know who did what, when, right? Uh, that, that's stored in some database, some log file, some audit log, right? Somewhere. And all of that data can very easily be ingested uh, in, into a process intelligence platform like, like Pies to give you the ability to understand where there's bottlenecks, where there's hotspots, where there's opportunities for automation or where there's low hanging fruit to, to really get started, right? Because uh. you always want to start with an area where you can deliver the greatest impact uh, and you know, for the lowest cost, right? Obviously. Sure. So, so that's, that's how I would you know, typically get started with evaluating the current state. Okay. That makes perfect sense. I'm, and I'm glad you brought up that, you know, the, the whole stopwatch and, and, and the, the way it used to be. I, it took me right back to the movie of the, the origin of, of, of McDonald's. I don't know if you saw that movie where they literally sure. drew it out with chalk, <laughs> you know, out on, a, on, on right. the playground and they were laying that, that process out and trying to get it refined with the stopwatch. So that, so what you're saying now is those days, you know, throw your, throw your chalk away, let your kids play with that in the driveway. There's a lot more sophisticated ways to do that process improvement now. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, what we essentially do in, in the Pies platform, right, for instance, is we'll hook up the different data sources. So, uh, you know, everything from the system of record, uh, the, you know, the work that gets done along the way to get to the final product, we'll bring in uh, CRM data, uh, we'll bring in HR system data that gives you a sense of uh, you know, people's seniority, their roles, departments, you know, how uh, a, a plant in, in North Carolina operates versus a plant in Chicago. So you can actually understand how work gets done in different areas. Right. And then take the best practices in each location or for each process and then apply that to other uh, okay. areas, right? That makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. So, if you're thinking, I'm thinking through this too now. So from a management standpoint, you know how it is, uh, prop job, we, we have to measure everything. So are any metrics that are really important when you start looking at process improvement that you really lean on that you, that you're trying to move the needle to see that you're actually making the impact that you're, you know, that you're ultimately trying to, to achieve. Right. Yeah. So look, the, the exact KPIs are, are typically specific to each business, right? Like, okay. like if I've got, uh, you know, let's say uh, a s- small parts, uh, electrical components that I'm, I'm creating, I might have sort of a different set of KPIs that I'm interested in because, you know, I've got small parts inventory. My, you know, I care a lot about sort of the u- unit economics uh, versus uh, you know, if I'm building aircraft, for instance, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, so, th- th- so the exact KPIs are are, are specific to business, but there, there's some things that are common across all manufacturing businesses, right? I care about quality, uh, right? I care about the cost of producing a, a you know pr- production component. I care about the cycle time, the speed with which I can process an order, for instance, right? I, I okay. care about aftermarket, um, uh, you know, cycle time. So th- there's, uh, th- there are a number of different kind of processes that are involved in, in an overall manufacturing process. 
uh, and the KPIs are essentially the optimization scope that I'm interested in, right? Okay. So I'm interested in improving the quality of my product. I'm interested in improving the cycle time uh, of this of this uh, process. Uh, you know, I'm interested in reducing uh, the amount of time people have to spend, right? Like humans have to spend in producing this process. So maybe I'm interested in identifying areas of automation, right? And in order to do this, you really got to kind of start with uh, sort of understanding what the current state is, right? Because once you understand that, you can then make changes and then see, well, hey, did the changes I make make things better uh, or the same, or did they make things worse, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, so you gotta you've gotta have kind of a continuous improvement cycle going, so that you can continually look at improving your operational processes. Got it. Got it. Makes perfect sense. Now, when you when when we were connecting before, you mentioned a strategy. You called it the MRI strategy, and, and so maybe you can break that down for our listeners out there. Because that is your approach to really understanding that process issue. Because that that may help unpack it a little bit further for us. Right. Yeah. So you know, taking an MRI of your process, right? This this is actually something uh, I, my buddy Habib at Tech Mahindra he kind of uses all the time to describe what we do. Right. It is sort of hey, uh, before you operate, take an MRI of the patient to understand. Uh, what the exact issue is, so you're not operating on the wrong kidney, right? For instance, because uh, that would be disastrous, and and you'd be shocked how often that happens in the, uh, you know, in the process improvement world, where people will make decisions uh, that will have disastrous consequences without understanding the data, right, up front. Is, so, it, is that because of a, just a false assumption up front, primarily? Because of a false, yeah, because of a false assumption. You know, a, a vendor promises them that, hey, this is the, the this is the end all be all to your problems, right? Got it. Like, you know, we there, there's a bunch of reasons why stuff like that happens. Okay. Uh, but you know, the approach is you gotta start by getting kind of to the best ability possible and end to end view of of that process. Right, uh, re really at a at a high level. Like, let's say if I'm looking at an order management process, right, where mm -hmm. I've got orders coming in, they come from different sources. You know, I might have a marketplace. A uh, you know, lot, lot of manufacturers are actually sort of getting into sort of creating these marketplaces where people can come and get what they need from you know in a self service manner. Uh, I, I might have uh, you know a salesperson putting in a an order, I might have an order coming in from a channel partner, right? There's there's lot, lots of different ways that an order can come in. And then that order goes through, you know, whatever journey it goes through till, you know, the product ships and it it, uh, it lands at uh, the customer's doorstep. So un understanding at a high level, like what the different process flows are, for, okay. for that order, right? And and typically, like, people are shocked when they see that, you know, there might be, uh, you know, 100 different variations, right, in terms of how the, that order might flow through the system, right? And we, we call those workflow variants, right, in the Six Sigma context. Okay. Uh, and, and, and some of those are going to be extremely efficient, uh, right, the happy path, as we call it, and, and some are going to be the unhappy path. Right where the order is delayed, and uh, so you want to kind of understand a at a high level, right? What are the different workflow variants? How many steps each variant has? How efficient it is? How long it takes? What each variant costs me, right? From a processing perspective, from a time perspective, and and then you stack rank them, right? To sort of understand, okay, well, w which are the outliers, right? Let's look at the ones that are maybe two standard deviation from the mean, for instance, right? That 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 are the ones that are the most expensive, um, and and you know, and how many orders actually go through those, right? If there's one order that's going through, you know, really inefficient variant, well, maybe it's an exception. I don't care about it, right? But if I've got a lot of orders that are going through uh, inefficient process flows, well, then you start to sort of 
look at uh, you know what where there's bottlenecks, right? Where in that process I have bottlenecks, and then once you identify that area, then you can kind of you know zoom into that okay. specific area. Totally makes sense. So I mean, I, we're, I'm thinking through my old reliability days. You know, things fail that they they can be opportunities to learn for process improvement right there. When you get down to trying to evaluate root cause, so does root cause analysis come into this as you try to improve that process? Yeah, I, I, I absolutely right. Like, well, we all know the saying, right? Think globally, act locally, right? Like, it's sort of like you, uh-huh. you you've got to have an understanding of that end to end complete process, right? But the magic really happens, right? At each each specific step or task, right? Sub-level. Like, right? At the at the end of the day, like someone's doing something, right? That uh, needs to maybe be done better or you know, there's a reliance on a on an upstream vendor uh, that might be delayed in in providing a part okay. uh, that's causing uh, us to have delays, right? So it's not enough to just take an MRI. You've got to analyze that MRI, right? And, sure. and sort of say, okay, well, you know, the solution might be, uh, you know, we need to add more more suppliers for this particular part so that you know we don't get hung up. Uh, uh, a solution might be, you know, we need to re-architect our workflows so that we avoid this bottleneck, right? It might be a training issue. You know, we hired a bunch of junior people and they're still figuring out how to get stuff done, right? But once you have an understanding of what the actual issue is, and then you drill down to an individual step in that process, you can then make those decisions. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now I, I'm curious. You've been you've been helping manufacturers all over. I know you have a lot of great examples, and I love stories. Maybe it's just because I have three daughters, and we and I, I tell a lot of stories. <laughs> so you, you got any examples? Any stories out there around maybe around automation specifically for our audience that come to mind when you think about that industrial manufacturer out there that you've helped improve their process and it really made an impact? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, hey, I I have a four year old daughter myself, and. Uh, you know, stories are my bread and butter and you know, there you go. getting her to pretty much, you know, <laughs> finish her meals too. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Do her homework right? Uh, from preschool. Uh, so uh, I, I, I love stories as well, uh, you know, because they, they really exemplify, you know, the, the real import of, of anything. Right. So right. I, I'll tell you this one story because we talked about, you know, people making the wrong decisions. All right. So there's uh, this manufacturing company that uh, we're working with that, you know, they were told to implement RPA, right, as a way of eliminating a a process issue that they had, uh, you know, on the, uh, on, um, on the on the shop floor. And RPA is robotic process automation, right? So it's it's a very specific type of type of automation. Uh, technology that you know, takes things that people might do manually and then automates them, right? That, okay. that, that, that specific step of the process, right? And, and they spent uh, you know, a couple million dollars and about six months implementing that solution, right? And I'm not even talking about the, uh, you know, the license costs and all of those things, right? Um, and, and it turns out like RPA was the wrong solution. Right, like they they spent all this time and money implementing it. They they ran it for about less than two months, and then spent the next three months ripping it out, basically. Oh wow! Right? Uh, and so we got brought in, right? And we did that MRI, right, of the of the process, and like we we identified, you know, the bottleneck that they were trying to address. Like automation really wasn't gonna wasn't the right solution. Now it could have been, right? Like like it could have been, you know, we need a different type of intelligent automation or or what have you. But the the issue was really with the business process orchestration, right? They they needed to have a better orchestration of that business process so that people were not so pe- people were basically doing work in a redundant fashion. Uh-huh. That if there was better orchestration, they would avoid doing that work, and it would be much more streamlined, right? So we recommended, you know, they 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 put in a BPM platform 
that would enable them to do that orchestration better, enable them to have better decisioning to easily uh, you know, accommodate the, the specific issues that they had with their process, right? So, so that's like a real world example of like, if you start just operating on the patient without that MRI, you, know, you, you might be operating on the wrong part of the body, so to speak, right? Ah, um, great. So that's, yeah, I mean I, I, I mean, I could go on all day. Like, you know, we're right now working with the Air Force to help them improve their maintenance operations right uh for for uh for aircraft right so they have these isochronal uh maintenance processes like a check b check c check right that should take you know let's say a process should take 10 days and it winds up taking 20 days right and really understanding why that issue occurs uh so that we can speed up that overall maintenance operation, right? And and for the you know for the Air Force in the country, that has significant um, security considerations, right? From like uh, mission capable rates of aircraft to aircraft availability, um, uh, you know, and, and it's been fantastic to sort of start working with the Air Force in the last couple of years, where you know I feel like you know we're we're really able to contribute, you know, to the to the sort of the greater good of the country. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. So it also speaks to, I mean, I'm hearing through your stories and your examples there. This is not one and done. You know, we're, you're not just coming here trying to fix one problem and then move on. This is, sounds more of a culture that you have to lean into as a company to really, you know, see the, the benefit on the back end. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, look, it's all about continuous improvement, right? right. It's, uh, it, it, you can never be done with improving your processes because the world is changing so much, right? In, right. in terms of new technologies are being introduced uh, all the time. Uh, you know, we, the, so we continuously have to look at, uh, you know, how do we improve our operations, right? Like we're all being asked, right? To do more with less, right? That's just the world we live in, unfortunately. So, so how do you, how, how do you enable that, right? You gotta, you gotta run a, a lean, mean machine yeah. uh, that gets more and more efficient day over day. You, you know, you've got to kind of have your pulse on the different dynamics that are changing within a process and the different external factors that affect your ability to execute that process, right? So, uh, you know, whether it's hiring people, right? We're continuously hiring new people. We're training those people, uh, understanding. Uh, you know where there's opportunities to get people more productive faster, right? Is right is, is something that you know is going to be done on a continuous basis. Okay. Um, you know we're we're more and more dependent on outsourcing and uh, you know uh, whether it's uh, upstream suppliers or you know people that are maybe doing drop shipping for us, right? Like there's. The, there's an external parties that are outside of our control and what we're seeing more and more, even from like some very large manufacturers that we work with is getting visibility into that end-to-end -end process is important, right? So even though I might have like a, a 3PL that's doing the actual delivery, uh, you know, manufacturers are now contracting that they get visibility into what that external vendor is doing, right? So that, like, to actually get the data of where they are in the process and doing what they're supposed to do, right? And so once you have that, you could actually bring that into Pies as well, right? And and we can provide an end-to-end -end visibility. Uh, to, and, you know, without that, all you know is, okay, hey, I need, I'm using this third party for delivery and the delivery is late, right? Right. But... But if you've got an understanding of the data that tells you where that delivery is in the process, right? Well, now we've got a you know complete picture, and we can understand and have a conversation with that vendor on, hey, bud, <laughs> what's going on here, right? Right, exactly. Well, Prabhjo, this has been a phenomenal conversation. I've learned a lot about manufacturing process and programming. So to let, we call it Eco S Y. So I'm gonna give you a why here, but we'll do a little special caveat. So we 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 get. You get a CEO of a manufacturer in, in an elevator. 
and you and you got you know ten 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 uh, stories to pitch your why to him or her on why leaning into improving manufacturing process improvement is important. So what are you going to say to them in that moment? The elevator's going up. You don't have a lot of time. So what would be your why behind this? Yeah. So the, the why really is to ensure that your business is running on all cylinders and making sure that you can be as effective and efficient as you possibly can be in delivering to customers, right? So do you have a sense of what the state of your business is today? Um, And if you, you know, typically people have some idea of how their business runs, but it's always so much more complex in terms of understanding the ping pong effect within, within processes, understanding where there's bottlenecks, where there's issues. Uh, And then, using that data to be able to improve that end-to-end process, right? Uh, I mean, look, I, 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 we work with uh, some CEOs that what they'll do on a weekly basis is hit play and pause and actually see how orders move through their, their process because we visualize that, that end-to-end process um, execution, right? So you can visually see, oh, here's the order started, it went through, this is yeah. where it got stuck. And, and to be able to do that, you know, for your entire business gives you know, CEOs and senior managers the ability to kind of, you know, have conversations with their people on the yeah. things that they need to improve. That's, that sounds phenomenal. So for Prob Joe, thank you so much. So where, where do we need, want to send people to learn more about you, connect with you, learn more about Fives? Where, where do you want them going? Yeah. I'll, you know, come on over to our website. Uh, you know, you can fill, fill out a fill out a uh, request for more information. Uh, you know, if you're interested in process improvement or figuring out how to get started uh, with Pies, I, I'd, I'd love to talk to you personally and and see how we can help you. Okay. Well, for the listeners out there, check out the show notes. You know that they're always there. Those links will be right there to connect directly with Prop Joe, all the wonderful things that they're doing over at Fives. And, and so be sure to check that out because it sounds like some a, a pretty amazing uh, solutions that you got going. So thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Chris. Absolutely. What a great episode. Prop Joe covered so much around process improvement. I really like how he talked about crawl, walk, and run. But the MRI strategy, that stood out to me the most. I mean, he, where he really digs deep to really understand the fundamental issues that are, that are, that are causing these problems because that's where you can actually implement solutions to make an improvement. So like he said, understand the data and then improve. So I tell you what, if you're enjoying this, these, these types of episodes, share it with someone. Send it out right now. Go ahead and send that text message. We want you to share Eco Ask Why because process improvement, these types of topics – or what we're trying to do to serve you with day in and day out. So please share that out. If you have a war story, get them to us. We want those. We're still collecting them. There's, there's, there's links in the show notes where you can send us those war stories directly. Give us a rating and review. That really does help. So thank you so much for taking the time with us. I hope you disconnected a lot of dots for you for process improvement. And keep asking why. <laughs>